Hi guys and welcome to another video on data mining the social media with Python. And today we are going to talk about analyzing tweets, time series analysis. And the previous tutorials analyze the content of tweets. In this section, we will discuss another interesting aspect of analyzing data from Twitter the distribution of tweets over time. Generally speaking, a time series is a sequence of data points that consists of, cons of successive observations over a given interval of time. As Twitter provides a created at field with the precise timestamp of the tweet, we can rearrange tweets into temporal buckets so that we can examine how users react to real-time events. We are interested in observing how a population of users is tweeting, not just a single user. So the data gathered via the streaming API is most suited for this type of analysis. <clears throat> so the analysis in this tutorial uses the, uses the data sets from a previous video where I pulled the data of uh, uh, by using the streaming API of the elections in India right now in Punjab. So th this is a nice example of how users react to real time events such as sport events, concerts, political elections, and everything from major disasters to TV shows. Other applications of time series analysis of Twitter data is online reputation management. A company can, in fact, be interested in monitoring what the users, possibly customers, say about them on social media. And the dynamic nature of Twitter seems to be perfect to track reactions to. For example, news releases about products and we'll take advantage of pandas capabilities to manipulate time series and again we'll use matplotlib for a visual in interpretation of the series so we are going to use this code pause the video and write down till this and i'll scroll down in a few seconds so you can Pause for the next part. And this is the rest of the code. This is the, remember this is the date time of uh, minimum and maximum. I did this on 10th of March uh, from 10 o'clock and I had it for about 11 o'clock. So I put one hour extra just to make sure. This is the year, month, date, or day, start time, and end time. This is the minutes, if you want the exact minute. So just remember when you are, uh, remember when you, uh, when you do the Twitter streaming, uh, streaming code. Uh, when you start the uh, when you start the the code script and when you end the script it, you will have it in your um, timestamp you just create it at is the create at and if we move to the end of the file scroll down like this and we can see at the last is 1058 and also like I mentioned in the when I ran uh, the script for my example it created some blank lines you have to remove the blank lines you have to find a way to remove the blank lines the empty lines otherwise the code will break so just, uh, just 
find a way to remove the blank lines in your text editor. There is always a quick fix. So when we run the code, it will create a PNG file. This file here. I'll explain the code first. So the script reads the .jsonl file given as the command line argument, loading tweets one line at a time, as discussed in previous scripts. And remember to remove the blank lines, especially for this particular exercise, if you get the extra lines. As we are interested only in the publication date of the tweets, we build a list all underscore dates, which contains only the created at it attribute for each tweet. The panda pandas series is indexed by creation time, which is represented in the idx variable as pd dot date time index of the previously collected dates. The granularity of these dates goes down to the second. We then create np dot array of once using the once function, which will be used to aggregate the tweet frequencies. Once the series is created, we use a technique called bucketing or resampling, which basically changes the way we index the series. In this case, grouping the tweets per minute. As we specify that we're resampling by sum, each bucket will contain the count of tweets published in that particular minute. The fill NA zero call appended at the end of the resampling just a precaution in case a particular bucket doesn't have any tweet <clears throat> in this case the bucket will not be discarded but contain zero as the frequency this is unli unlikely to happen given the size of our data set but it's a real possibility for smaller data So the, uh, so the code that follows uses the matplot library to create a nice visualization of the time series. Matplotlib is in general more verbose than other data analysis libraries, but it's not complicated. The interesting part in this example is the use of minute locator and date formatter to label correctly the time intervals on the x-axis. On this case, an interval of 20 minutes is used. And like we said, the plot is saved in tweet underscore time underscore series dot PNG. We can observe it in this figure here. So the kickoff of the final of, uh, of this uh, the script start was at 10 a.m. and there is uh, around 11 o'clock there is 1040 yeah approximately 1045 maybe 1050 1045 I think uh, there is a peak in user activity And there are some peaks here as well. So, so this is a particularly interesting why they tweeted here. A lot of tweets went just after 10, 1045, around 1045. So this is uh, more material for us to investigate what exactly happened here. So that is 
now we, uh, we are c concluding the mining Twitter series where, where we have worked with hashtag topics and time series so to sum up this series um, so this series of uh, in, uh, tutorials introduce some data mining applications using the Twitter data. We discussed how to register an application with the Twitter platform in order to get the credentials and interact with the Twitter APIs. We have considered different ways to download tweets, particularly using the REST endpoints to search for published tweets and using the streaming API to keep the connection open and collect upcoming tweets. When observing the anatomy of a tweet, we, find, we found that a tweet is much more than 140 characters. In fact, it is a complex object with a lot of information in it. The starting point of our analysis opened the discussion on frequency analysis based on entities. Our focus has been on hashtags, one of Twitter's peculiarities widely adop adopted by users to track specific topics. We also discussed aspects of natural language processing, NLP, such as tokenization and normalization of tokens. As we have seen, the language on hashtags, excuse me, <clears throat> the language on Twitter doesn't follow the conventions of standard English with specific traits such as hashtags, user mentions, URLs, emoticons, and so on. On the other hand, we found that the language on Twitter follows a, a statistical rule called the Zips law, just like any other natural language corpus of a decent size. To conclude our analysis, we took a look at the time series it's extremely interesting to observe how users react to real-time events and time series analysis can be a powerful tool to analyze large data sets. And the next series of tutorials is also about Twitter, but the focus will be on the users. In particular, we want to understand the users that are connected to the social network. So that will be the start of the next series. So if you enjoyed the videos so far please hit the like button and please do subscribe and if you have a comment please leave that and support me any way you can thank you so much for following me so far and hope to see you in the next lesson